Hey everyone, McCain Vogel here in Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania. We are at the Pennsylvania No-Till Alliance's 20th anniversary field day at Jim Hershey's farm. Welcome to Conservation Ag Update. Conservation Ag Update is brought to you by Yetter Farm Equipment. Thanks for that introduction, McCain. Welcome to Conservation Ag Update. And hey, let's kick things off right there at the field day where attendees got an up-close look at just how deep Jim Hershey's roots run after 25 plus years of cover crops and no-till. Lisa Blazier and Sheward Diker led a soil pit session, so let's dig deep for some highlights. Everything green that we see around us is photosynthesizing. Photosynthesis grabs that carbon dioxide that's in the atmosphere, combines it with water, sunlight, and makes simple sugars. So anytime we have a living photosynthetic plant, it is producing sugars, it's building that root system, and it's pumping those simple sugars and some other compounds out into the soil. We call those root exudates or the liquid carbon pathway. Um, so that is five times more likely, that carbon through that process, five times more likely to stay in that soil and contribute to, to long-term stable organic matter. We see um, a lot of Nightcrawler burrows here in the soil, and uh, yeah, you have them everywhere. <clears throat> and you see those typically. I saw one study where they said, you know, our subsoils they're so dense, really, they're they're so compact, just naturally, that roots cannot really penetrate them. So how do those roots come down in here? Well, they grow predominantly through the cracks and through the macropores. So you see, uh, typically all the roots are following, in this case, our nightcrawler burrows. Those nightcrawlers have been shown to be very sensitive to tillage because they need crop residue here at the soil surface. If you can kind of calibrate your eye to identify those nightcrawler middens, that is a great tool for you to have as you're just walking across your fields because once you recognize that little cluster of residue, it gives you a really great indication of how your nightcrawler population is doing, right? And those nightcrawlers can live five to seven years. Um, and then once they die, if there's not tillage in the system, that burrow stays in place for like 25 years. And that is easy access year after year for your crop roots to get down um, dry years to that water table, to those micronutrients as well. Wow, very interesting stuff there. Let's check back in now with McCain for more coverage from Pennsylvania and today's Cover Crop Connection. McCain, take it away. Thanks, Noah. McCain Vogel here with this week's Cover Crop Connection. I'm here at the Pennsylvania No-Till Alliance's 20th anniversary celebration on Jim Hershey's farm, having a field day in Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania. Uh, as you can see, we've had lots of equipment on display, lots of demos so far, and uh, lots of great speakers too. So uh, we've got a great, Cover crop connection in store for you. We're going to toss it off to that segment right now. This is my maize row. It's planted a little out of its season. Uh, we'd like to plant this at the last half of August uh, uh, because it, it likes the cooler weather. This sort of sets the table. So if you're going to have uh, Sunday dinner and you're going to have friends over after church, it, it could very well be that, that you're going to have the table set before you leave for church. Or if not, you're leaving home really early and you're getting there and you're getting it all laid out. You get the silver and the napkins and the glasses all set up for you. That's what Maze Pro is trying to do for corn. Corn is your guest. Maze Pro is setting the table for your guest for a banquet. There's 10 different species in here. Um, uh, about half of them will winter kill. So we plant in August. The things like sorghum sedan and phacelia and things like that will winter kill. The flax seed will, uh, the linseed or flax will winter kill. Some of your clovers, your vetches, and your winter rye will stay. So it's a feeding program. I talked over there about how important it is to feed the microbes. With this particular product, we're feeding uh, through living roots, and then we're also feeding, feeding the, the, the soil through detritus as, as the things expire. And then we can either plant green or terminate it. All right, and as I mentioned before, there's been just a plethora of great cover crop content uh, on the farm today. So stay tuned in the coming weeks for lots more from this event. And be sure to go check out the podcast with Jim Hershey at CoverCropStrategies.com as well. Well, that's all for this week's Cover Crop Connection. Until next time, back to you, Noah. All right, good stuff there. Thank you very much, Road Warrior McCain. 
Well, the 12th Annual National Strip Tillage Conference is in the books, and what a show it was with hundreds of farmers exchanging ideas in Iowa City. Tell you what, it was hard to find an empty seat in the general session room. We saw top-notch presentations from Jerry Hatfield, Joey Hansen, John Stevens, Ray Flickner, Gary Zimmer, and Jared Fender. And there were also 16 classrooms, 14 roundtables, and hours of networking in those hallways. Also beforehand, a lot of people attended the pre-conference Strip Till Field Day hosted by Iowa State Extension, and they got an up-close look at 11 different toolbars and also received a Strip Till crash course from Iowa State's Levi Powell. Well, I caught up with Levi and asked him about the state of Strip Till in Iowa and surrounding areas. We see it growing, uh, you know, in a lot of different, I'll say, hot pockets is the way we see it, is you'll get a couple guys that start into it, neighbors see it, it's being successful for them. Uh, they might do some custom work for some neighbors and it just kind of grows from there when you get a grower or a few growers started in an area. And we're getting more and more questions about it every year, it feels like. Uh, we've been doing strip till and aims kind of within our research operation since 2016. And so we've been at it almost 10 years on a lot of our plots and programs up there. Um, and so it's neat to see that more broadly adopted. And I think as you know, your input costs are changing, different uh, environmental regulations are changing, you get more and more people starting to take a look at it. And I think the biggest game changer has been the technology. We just have so much more technology today to make this easier out of the box as far as in-field guidance and uh, guidance lines and field management that, that we didn't have 10 to 12 years ago. And so it just keeps getting better and better and more easier to adopt for folks. Great perspective there from Levi. Moving on, the National Association of Conservation Districts held a summer meeting in Milwaukee last week. Mayor Cavalier Johnson and Governor Tony Evers were actually in attendance for the keynote presentation featuring none other than no-till farmers Mike Lesseter as he spoke about the key elements of no-till history, why it's a blueprint for future change, and he also shared some of the many benefits of no-till. Let's check out some highlights. Water management. Uh, this is a real world picture of conventional and no-till ground following the same rain event on adjacent farmland. Everyone who's running side-by-side -side plots can, do, can show this very story by turning on the pivots and watching what happens. We've got detailed summaries of farmland following tremendous storm events. And conventional farmers can lose five tons of acre virtually overnight Meanwhile, a neighboring farmer with no-till and cover crops might lose just 200 pounds in the same rainfall. Very significant. Imagine most of you have seen a no-till water demonstration here that uh, clearly depicts um, what water looks like coming off conventionally tilled grounds versus no-till versus no-till with cover crops. Great story on water. Uh, the soils, the organic matter, the soil structure, the benefits of earthworms. No-till fields will have 10 times the earthworms as conventionally tilled soils, greatly improving soil structure, moving and depositing nutrients, and all the biological activity. And we've got the full presentation on notillfarmer.com. Highly recommend checking it out. Well, let's wrap things up with our video of the week and some words of advice from the one and only Gary Zimmer during the closing seconds of his strip-till conference presentation last week. My last slide. Live like you're going to die tomorrow. I'm 80 years old. I couldn't die tomorrow. You never know. That's how I'm going to live. But farm like you're going to live forever because someone else is going to take it over. That's the fun in farming. So thank you very much. I hope I gave you some things to talk about. Love it. That'll do it for this episode. Story idea, shoot me an email at innewman at lessermedia.com. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you soon. Have a great day.